Hey everyone, it's John, your Gen X grandpa. And one year ago, I reviewed this smartwatch. And boy, did a lot of people have some opinions about my opinion on this watch. I think I need to clear some things up about this watch. Because as you can see, and if you've watched some of my videos over the last year, I'm still wearing it. So here we are one year later, and I'm going to give you a one year review of the iTouch Air from iTouch Wearables. So what do I think of the watch after using it for one year? And when I say using it, I have hardly taken it off. Well, let's talk about what I think is the most important thing when it comes to a smartwatch, and that's the battery life. In October, I took a trip and I did not bring my charger with me because I specifically wanted to see how long the watch would last. I ended up having to extend my trip. In fact, I had to double the amount of time that I was going to be on this trip. I figured based on what I had calculated that the watch would last five or six days. I was surprised to find that it lasted nearly 12 days off of a charge. Now granted I wasn't going out and doing a lot with it. I was just wearing it, walking around. I never turned it off, stayed on the entire time. It practically stayed on my wrist the entire time. But to get 11 to 12 days of battery life out of a smartwatch is great. Now a lot of that is going to depend on your screen brightness and the number of functions built into it. And because this doesn't have a ton of functionality, it's not checking your heart rate. It's not um, monitoring a number of different things that more modern smartwatches monitor. Well, it's going to last a little bit longer. So I am impressed with the battery life of this watch. The other thing that I'm impressed with is its durability. For the most part, this watch has held up. Uh, it's gotten wet, I've banged it into things, and the face of the watch hasn't cracked, and the watch hasn't stopped working because it got wet when I was washing my hands or if I was in the rain or something like that. So, as far as durability-wise, I'm pretty impressed with it. The only thing that I will say, and I'll try and show you this, without uh, destroying the watch band. And I know I saw some complaints. This was one of the chief complaints of this watch is that the watch band breaks. And yeah, we're getting there. As you can see, it's, um, it's cracked and it's about to fail. Two days later. The other thing too is you can see here that the back of the watch is pitted. And this started happening about a month into wearing the watch. Now I play sports with this watch. I sleep with the watch on because it monitors my sleep and it rarely comes off. I do clean the watch whenever I charge it. I make sure to clean the back of it. But that metal coating has come off and the watch has become pitted over the last year and actually it's starting to irritate my skin. So it might be time to get another smartwatch. So if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below what inexpensive smartwatch you'd like me to buy. If you want to help me buy that watch, you can go over to buymeacoffee.com slash John Wilkerson and help me with the funding for this. Okay, so let's talk about the elephant in the room. My complaints that I had for the watch, uh, primarily being that it lacked a number of functions that I was expecting and that it really kind of failed to meet my expectations as far as the interface and things like that. I've gotten a lot of suggestions over the time that, oh, you can change the watch faces based on the software. It doesn't work. The latest version of the software for this watch doesn't allow you to change the watch face and the newest iTouch software doesn't even work with this watch. So uh, the custom is, like I said, it's not even custom. You can't even customize the watch face. The other thing that I was a little disappointed with is that there wasn't an ambient light sensor. And that has sort of, 
I mean, I've gotten used to the fact that I, I'll just dim my watch before I go to bed. But one thing that has happened is that the lowest setting of the watch is now completely blanked out. So I've had to memorize the number of taps it takes to turn the brightness back on so that I can see it. Uh, I've tried updating the firmware on the watch. I've tried resetting the watch to factory defaults and none of that has helped resolve that. So the first brightness setting is actually off, which isn't helpful if you're actually trying to see what's on the watch face and get it back to the brightness setting that it uh, originally needed. As far as tracking steps, I've been using it to track steps and I feel like it's fairly accurate as far as the distances that are covered. I have noticed every once in a while it doesn't very accurately track my steps and that tends to be if I'm inside somewhere like if I'm walking in the mall. Uh, yeah, I walk in the mall. Uh, it does do a great job when I'm playing sports of tracking my steps and I love getting that notification when I'm in the middle of a pickleball game that I've reached my step goal for the day. So it has ha it, it, it's had its benefits. It still has its drawbacks. Again, a lot of people were pointing out in the comments that, oh, well, this is a $60 watch. How much do you expect from it? And I think what I said in my previous review was that for the money, for a beginner smartwatch, I think it was okay. But for what I wanted, it wasn't what I expected. And maybe that didn't come across to you, the viewer. And I hope that comes across right now that I think for a basic entry level watch, um, what I paid for it, which wasn't full price, it wasn't the price. If you went to the iTouch wearables website at that time, this watch was not listed there. It was discontinued. This was a discontinued model. And so the price was much lower and I probably shouldn't have expected as much from it. And when you looked at the features that were available on the current iTouch at that time, a year ago, some of them weren't in this watch. So I'll have to admit the packaging drew me in. And when I was looking at the features for this watch, what I was seeing was the features for the latest model. And that's what led to the disappointment in buying this watch. Again, given the price that I paid, I think this is a fine watch. Until next time, my name is John, your Gen X grandpa. Hit that like button if these are the kinds of videos that you like. Make sure you subscribe so you know when the next one comes out. You're supposed to ring the bell. Who knows if that works or not? Let me know uh, in the comments below what kind of smartwatch do you think budget on a budget uh, that I should try and check out. And of course, buymeacoffee.com slash John Wilkerson if you want to financially support me getting another smartwatch. All right. Bye.